Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Thank you for taking the time to come and subscribe and be part of the Chatinath session. Uh, we are very, very happy to have you all here. And we have a very esteemed uh, set of panelists bringing in a different perspective and a most critical function. Last year, 2020, uh, what a year it has been for, for all of us. Right? I mean, it has been a lifetime learning, I guess. If not uh, for all of us, at least for me, importantly, it kind of brought me to the basics and told me that you should expect the unexpected. Even those who are probably the astrologers and others who predict future wouldn't have in their wildest dream imagined that this could be such a global pandemic and almost take the entire year. And when every time we thought it is almost over, we have something else coming follows and dips into right so that's how the year for 2021 started but i guess it is leaving us with something called the new normal uh, i'm your host i'm kaushik i run an entity called network game along with a partnership firm by the internet and so we jointly host this session for you and on the panel we have radhika from transsearch she's from mumbai and she's helping with executive hiring so she's going to bring the perspectives from that we have anish who's the chro of mar labs uh, you know, again, a long relationship with Anish and he can bring in how people practices are put to play. We also have Dr. Sriharsha Achar, the CHRO from Star Health Allied Insurance. So from an, an industry standpoint, he will bring in those perspectives. And I guess somebody who's broad brushing and connecting across all the spectrum would be Martin, who heads the HR for Amazon joint ventures. So he will bring in the huge multi-billion dollar perspective as well as what it means when you look at a small startup. Uh, in terms of those joint ventures, so you can draw off those enterprises and bring those capabilities. So without much ado, let me get started. And uh, Radhika, uh, the first question I probably want to throw open to you is, we don't want to obviously talk about the past. We don't want to talk about learnings that have been there or saying what is going on and stuff. If we can look at it from more of the futuristic way, the way forward that we need to look into, what do you think from in the new normal, what type of leadership are companies looking for and what are the changed attributes are they looking for? Thanks, Kaushik. I agree, there's no sense in looking back, uh, you know, at the year that's been. But a lot of the changes that have come into the world of work are here to stay. So you're right, there are some uh, very clear, um, you know, definitive changes that leaders need to bring into their own management style. So for starters, all organizations are looking at risk in a very, you know, very, very uh, defined way today. I mean, so business continuity, because that got impacted today, going forward, organizations want to cover their bases very clearly when it comes to business continuity. So the first thing that leaders need to do is very quickly upskill in certain aspects which will help them with their businesses. You know, that could be in the area of, for instance, digital. While today, I mean, all of us talk about it, but there are still a number of uh, sectors, in fact, uh, and organizations in those sectors, which are still way behind the curve when it comes to, you know, digitizing uh, processes internally or even the way they address their uh, customers or suppliers. So a uh, digital transformation is very big. It's a huge agenda in a lot of organizations and those that were toying with it today, it's, it's kind of taken center stage. So that's a skill set that leaders need to uh, acquire for themselves and where uh, they are not able to you know acquire it for themselves they need to bring on board people with the requisite skill sets and beef up their teams with people who bring that competence and capability so uh, uh, so the second aspect to that answer would be hiring the right kind of people for your team so that you're able to manage business risk now that could be in the area of digital another area which is which uh, you know uh, came up in a big way was supply chain you know supply chain for a number of organizations got impacted and now, that was because of the pandemic, but it's also because of, for instance, political tensions with neighbors and so on, where you have uh, uh, supply chain systems have got impacted. So bringing in the requisite talent at leadership levels to take care of these kind of contingencies. So business risk and how to manage business risk, that is a big ask today from all leaders. The second, um, and it's related really, you know, you have to redefine leadership competencies to look into to look at the fact that today environments are ambiguous. Leaders are today operating in extremely ambiguous, uncertain times, but at the same time, organizations need to deliver. Teams within organizations need to deliver. So a very huge leadership uh, requirement and competence is the ability to lead decisively, to uh, handhold your teams, to give focus to your teams, 
in times which are otherwise ambiguous so in an environment which is ambiguous for a leader to be decisive and to be able to you know set concrete goals and to handhold and mentor that um, capability or that competence is today um, required more than ever the third is uh, we all know that flexible working uh, has now become the norm uh, and that's not just work from home I and mean, that, that obviously is a, you know a, a mckinsey institute in fact says that post pandemic 20% of organizations the world over are going to uh, have flexible working in one form or the other now that opens up huge opportunities it means that a large part of the workforce which uh, you know uh, for instance women who had opted out of working for personal reasons they could now all be tapped in uh, you know and uh, could be uh, uh, could be part of the workforce once again because if you're working from home anybody can work uh, but that also means that managing that workforce um requires a specific set of skills how are you going to manage that workforce the other is there's going to be um a lot of restructuring and that's already started in a number of organizations right now restructuring means um certain roles become redundant but that doesn't mean organizations should lose their good people uh there is a need today to upskill and redeploy good resources into new roles and that requires leaders to be open to uh taking that uh, you know that chance on their people and saying look we can use these people but use them elsewhere um uh, because you know especially at mid management levels it's far cheaper to upskill and redeploy than to hire from the market um you can't avoid that for certain specific roles but for a number of roles it's easier to redeploy leaders need to be able to take that call right and and the last thing is really how you look at uh, employee welfare it's a big one today uh so you can't just look at employee welfare from the point of view of uh, performance management or um, uh, or you know career management or even employee engagement uh today this is no longer an you know an hr uh, uh requirement it's not a kra for the chr of the organization to say you know look at employee engagement today it's something which leaders need to manage you have to look at employee welfare which is all of these things plus more you know in this whole new normal employee welfare kind of take center stage once again absolutely absolutely thank you so much so that actually brings in a different perspective right i mean this is from what leaders should be expecting from a character perspective anish what do you think enterprises should be doing how should we be gearing up for our, you know getting up ourselves for these kind of situations kashik so thanks uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, to all my uh, fellow panelists as well as the others out there i think um, you know we've all gone through this change and you know it's it's like almost uh, we are into the 11th month of this whole thing so it's becoming it's it's really become a normal but what are some of the changes and what is um, you know really uh, important for enterprises is really about is to really understand that the future is going to be really about really hybrid in fact we see a lot of things being stated you know different models are saying 322 that is 3 days uh of uh, work from office two days you know uh, you know people were working from remotely and two days of holidays in fact um, i've been stating in my company it is going to be the three is going to be work from home two days is going to be in office right so i think the reality is going to be that the way 2025 percentage of the folks are going to be in office at any point of time the primary reason for that is also we need to make organizations need to make some behavioral changes in individuals as well because today we will we have to ensure the safety and wellness of employees what earlier was possible in a meeting room of 10 to 12 people sitting together you know in one particular meeting now we need to enforce those social distancing norms out there how are we ensuring the communicating on the safety the welfare part of it to employees i think these are some of the things which are going to be there however 100% remote will be a rarity because employees also at one point of time would want to come and connect uh, but the reality is that there's going to be more flexibility from employers and that's how enterprises have to be um, really there are already a lot of offices which we are, we are hearing which have already moved into a hot seat concept so the whole layout of the offices and all have changed they moved into more smaller offices you know made more open spaces as such so that is really the reality uh, which is going to be there i think the last point which i really want to add on one is on the office setup the second is how behaviors or you know competence people i think one of the most important this is just a um, add on to what radhika basically said 
I think one of the important things in managers is really also about how to adapt to this whole virtual environment. Okay, what earlier we were used to the look and feel, the touch aspect of it, I think that is the change. How can we bring in more empathy uh, towards our team members? How do we understand over a call as to what is the what are the problems that they are going through? How do we monitor, track their performance? I think these are some of the things which the enterprises are going through or making changes at this point of time. Perfect, perfect. So I think that also sets up that you know for enterprises that have had minimum base structure set in you know kind of a policy or basic infrastructure in place, maybe it's a question of adaptation. But Martin, to you, what does it mean? You know, look at Amazon, look at the joint ventures. That's a huge giant already well versed with all the remote working and kind of working with multi-culture, multi-environment. How do you adapt it to the joint ventures and small startups? What should we be prepared for? Sure. Um, I, I can uh, give the example of what we faced itself, right? So I'm managing two companies. One is the customer service environment. The other one is a seller. The seller was very easy. You know, quickly move work from home, you know, until we kind of decide, come back and, you know, uh, make, make those changes. There. But for the customer service environment, you know, there is a lot of customer data involved. You know, there is, you need to, you know, protect the uh, cust customer's uh, privacy and all those things. So, and since we are a JV, we are, we are like a seen as an outsourced vendor and that applies for us. So, and lock, when the lockdown, uh, you know, got off and there was so many, you know, everyone was like, you know, hurrying down to, you know, buy a lot of stuff, you know, the essentials to start with. And there were a lot of customer queries because you'd, the deliveries were delayed. You know, you don't know when it was going to come in and there was panic, right? So, uh, so you, you need to have, we had to get the people into the office, right? So, so they, we hadn't done a work from home then. So initially, we would start with people with tenure of 10 months, you know, we get into complete and do a work from home, we enable, because at least you have a trust on the employee, you know, understand the system, understand the culture, what is required, et cetera, right? But the, uh, for the rest of the employees, we said, let's, let's get them into the office. And there, you know, you couldn't do a maximized capacity because social distancing norm, you can't, uh, you know, fool your capacity. So work that through. But there again, you need to have a playbook. You know, thankfully what we did was first, you know, return, preparing for returning to office. So, you know, what, what happens in case things don't, you know, uh, when there is a COVID case is detected of the people that are coming in, right? So we spent a lot of time to create that, uh, you know, uh, the playbook and the government regulations were changing, you know, then, you know, during the lockdown time, right? So, so we had to be nimble to make those changes as, as we, as and when we went through. Uh, but as an organization, safety is always on top of our mind. So, Thankfully, you know, our indexing on safety was always there. Uh, we did have a false start, right? So when we started uh, with, you know, we, we did a phase one. So let's bring in 10 people, see, test it out, and then we will uh, go to, you know, next set of people, get to 50 and things like that. But the first bunch of 10 people were brought in and we had a false start. You know, we, there was an employee who was, you know, uh, in the, after the middle of the shift was complaining about fever and had to go back and obviously, First time you are dealing with a situation, and as the leaders, is it let's kind of you know shut shop, saying you know suspend the operations for you know, until we you know kind of find out what are the reasons. So suspended the operations, then two three days we figured out it was a negative, false negative, and then brought back in. We had a situation when we had full full strength coming in as well. So but thankfully the playbook helped, and you know and you had to take a call. Topmost, I think, you know, put safety as an index, work back on that and do that thing. Preparing for it, I think this is going to be the new normal. We don't know how the vaccines are going to work and how those coming in. So it would be great to have the playbook when this kind of situation comes in. You know, at least from my experience now, you don't have to go and suspend the entire office. You know, uh, that's a learning for us. You know, we'll start with, you know, contact tracing, you know, contain containment zone, work through that because that's that's going to be, uh, the challenge that is going to come in for us. So, uh, yeah, be, you know, make sure we plan for it, uh, think it through, you know, uh, make some quick decisions, always index on safety of the employees because, you know, uh, it, in the shorter run, you might lose out, but, you know, it is, it is a longer term gain for you, you know, t keep a view on the longer, longer term perspective. I think that's the way I would kind of uh, put it across. Perfect, perfect, Martin. That's that's good. I think if I further extend that same question, 
Mr. Achar, uh, it's to you, right? I mean, at least the advantage that I see with the rest of the organizations is they are information and technology savvy, probably used to leveraging the technology based working and invariably have at least done some parts of work from home earlier. Industry like yourself, you know, where not necessarily all the 100% of them are tech savvy. How have you been gearing up and what do you think it's going to be for the future, per se? Uh, let me start by saying the past is in our heads, but the future is going to be in our hands. So basis that statement, let me move on to the next one. I think uh, insurance industry by far has been the least affected. And within the insurance industry, I think the health insurance industry has only shown growth. Growth to a very large extent. And our Star Health is one company that uh, upped its targets in the middle of the season. So we were supposed to do 8,800 crores and chairman comes and says, no, I want 16% more. This is year 10K. So March 31st, we should be trying to do 10,000 crores uh, as the target. And uh, of course, uh, Star Health uh, is pretty digitized. I think we're, we're, we, all our organizations are dealing with uh, divergent and unique perspectives. Initially, it was all about business continuity, whether it is Star, whether it is any other industry. But now I think it has shifted to leadership and strategy. Wellness is the new benefit. I mean, managing health, wellness, and morale remains key concerns as far as our organization is concerned, and probably it applies to everybody else. I think everybody has moved past the logistics of enabling remote working. So even very, very traditional organizations that used to even shy away from WFH, now they're talking of only WFH, but employees don't want WFH anymore. So virtual tools, I think so many tools have come, including the one that we're talking right now. Nobody had heard of this. Nobody had heard of Zoom. I mean, taking Zoom to Zoom. It's terrific, uh, whether it's Google, whether it's Microsoft Teams, virtual tools will mature further with all these AI, ML, AR, and VR technologies that we're talking about. However, protecting organization culture in a virtual world is going to be the new challenge that needs to be solved. People are coming in bits and parts. I mean, even in our organization, except for the people who are who have comorbidities and uh, pregnant women and women with infants, they are uh, permanently work from home. Otherwise, the rest of the people are 50-50. One week, one set comes in. One week, another set comes in. All the senior management is, 100% uh, uh, of the senior management is in office from yesterday after such a long time. There will be likely an increase in outsourcing given that remote working is more acceptable now and increased risk appetite will give way to an adaptive and growth mindset to this i just want to say that when you pivot mindset has to change and finally communication has become more frequent daily to hourly weekly to daily monthly to weekly annual to quarterly clearly the transparency has gone up that's my view awesome Awesome. Radhika, from a search perspective, right, I mean, particularly dealing with the executive hires and, and what has been said in terms of the previous capability per se, right? You have been looking at only must have skills, good to have skills and some technology base. Like Mr. Acha was mentioning, completely the whole paradigm has changed. What do you think so that your factor ratio is higher? Look, at TransSearch, we only do leadership level hiring. I mean, this is pure play executive search, which is CXOs, functional heads, business heads. And, you know, we have a board practice. But if I look at just the uh, kind of hiring that I've done over the last 10 months, which is surprisingly a lot of CXO hiring and a lot of functional head hiring, you know, some capabilities, like I mentioned earlier, which were earlier good to have. So, you know, digital transformation was always uh, one point on every JD, but it was always a good to have. You know, um, so the usual uh, skill sets that one is looking for, say, in a CEO would always be, uh, you know, P&L management and you're looking at um, somebody who's grown businesses and, you know, uh, who's handled, say, international markets. So, so the, the focus was always around, you know, the business. But today there is a very strong focus on some of these core areas. So digital transformation is no longer a good to have. It is a need to have. So much so that uh, a very recent hire, uh, which has happened, do you know the person who was hired has not been in a line function, uh, line role for a really long time, but the person was handling digital transformation for his organization, but at a global level. 
but he's been managing that for quite a few number of years he's not been in a pnl role but he's been taken in as a ceo for a very large organization primarily because this is today uh, an absolute uh, mandate that they need to you know tackle in a very real way a lot of sectors uh, you know who uh, where this can make a huge difference to the way they operate going forward example retail i mean if you've not done this a lot of brick and mortar retail organizations who've not straddled digital can today get left behind so that's been a uh, you know that is one major change uh, which has happened the other um, is this entire focus around people and how do you manage people it is no longer a feel good look it's uh, it's essential to business you know um, terms like employee engagement i mean i know they've been around for the longest time and um, probably the other chros on the panel will uh, you know so will, will, will have their own views on this i've always felt that these were always nice to have um, uh, you know things when you when you are in discussions but today it's absolutely mandatory because if you can't support your teams and if you can't manage their wellness through times like this it's going to be very difficult to sustain your business so it's these have become absolutely crucial and essential to sustaining business going forward the third is um, again issues like diversity which uh, you know diversity again is 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 an agenda you know it's something which uh, globally corporates take on and i always feel these are things which which get added i mean uh, at the risk of sounding maybe a little um, biased or negative but today diversity has become an extremely real life uh, you know issue and and it's very easy today to include a diverse workforce because you have technology and work from home has gained momentum so it's very easy to include a diverse workforce uh, and and leaders should be able to uh, you know incorporate that into their uh, into their strategy for developing organizations uh, so that today is an ask so diversity is no longer a good to have it's today a need to have so so some of these areas today i find have gained momentum and they've actually shifted from the good to have li- list to the need to have part of your you know jd and organizations today talk about these up front people who've done this uh, who come with prior experience of having built uh, digital organizations or who come with prior experience of having built a diverse workforce today are also sought after not because it's good to have leaders like that but honestly um, the organization feels a need to hire leaders like that right right thank you and and what does that mean from an investment area anish do you want to touch upon stating as an enterprise you know what was your traditional paychecks and planning cost to company for an employee that you would think of how does that change in relationship to these areas and martin you can add to what anish is stating up kashik with this change um, you know i would say there are a lot of positives also that has that has actually happened one is clearly you know as everybody said this flexible work options now is you know more of an accepted sort of norm and um, it's no longer going to be you know a debatable issue in um, organizations but i think couple of things that will really go uh, that will change in the future you know it's not just about learning learning obviously you know when the whole thing of digital and i'm specifically talking about let's say take an example from it we went through a transition of the digital the digit uh, you know the digital world when the whole thing you know again we were talking about reskilling upskilling and all right and that is like a five year old journey you know perhaps even more than that today i think everybody has understood the need a pandemic is actually struck there were job losses you know there was no hiring happening there were opportunities were limited now it is actually in the minds of each and every individual plus organizations will have to reskill uh, will have to make that effort but what is more important is today if we are giving flexible work options how do you connect with employees you know how are practices people practices getting more digitized and op- the options being available to everyone not that it didn't exist i think it's only going to increase with time see most of the larger companies anyway had adopted that or you know mid tier to other thing it is the problem was with a lot of smaller organizations and you know i know a lot of organizations where you know basic St- uh, stuff was not there of digitizing and things like that i think that you know those are some of the changes that people are really uh, understanding the importance of that so it has become an imperative as such the second biggest change is going to be on rewards and recognition right and when i say rewards and recognition there are couple of things wellness um, anyway uh, shri harsh uh, you know touched upon that particular thing but i think there is an increased awareness amongst employees on what benefits are all about 
right the whole importance of uh, social benefits the whole importance of saving and all those things has become a very very uh, important aspect in the mind of individual just giving an example medical insurance when you know every year companies have the renewals and things like that the whole top up option was never looked at you know people used to be so uh, you know uh, uh, absolutely lethargic towards that particular would not even know. today there are more there is more awareness people are actually going in for that particular thing right so the concepts which existed now the awareness the need is actually felt and being um, asked by people that essentially means there is a cost increase to the company as well there, right? there, there, there you know it could be in not uh, you know but at the same time you know uh, koshik lot of those cost um, benefits which companies are saving are going to be used into this i would still say there would be a significant saving because travel costs are still down right and i don't see in the next 6 to 8 months again it is not going to be that sort of a travel companies are also planning in that uh, you know have made their financial the whole cost of transportation and all those things you know are still going to be saved so the, you know you will use those cost saving to look at multiple other things right but one of the things from a people practice perspective no i was i would just say uh, this is my last point which i would i would actually put across you know obviously the multiple things but i think the whole concept of perquisites Uh, you know are going to go away this free lunches and things like i think that expectation will go away there were reasons earlier you know it is not just from a talent attraction perspective this was there but it was also about companies were looking at you know how do i connect with employees how do they actually you know uh, talk to each other and those you know um, communication avenues would have actually you know built in some creativity some ideas and things like that i don't i think that will all go away or it will be very minimal plus the fear also will be there that if a mask sort of uh, catering and all those things are there why would i do that enterprises also will be a little more hesitant to do that because if one case comes in then you have so i think those are some of the things that will go away but so there are benefits which will be there more on digitization more on personalization right uh, higher needs for career development and things like that uh, but things like perks and all those things is not something which i would i would say uh, to me it will go away perfect perfect martin yeah. would you want to start with an angle of stating what should be the strategy to be adopted by startups i think um, one is i think take make see this as an opportunity right not as a challenge because uh, going back to the old is not is it will be foolish uh, for us right so what i mean by that is you know uh, we knew that work from anywhere was going to be happening and it will happen happen but the pandemic just with a you know a uh, click of a button has happened right now the opportunity is like the talent pool is available global thing global in terms of you know where you want to hire from right so and you know you know the costing and all those things may not matter because there there are certain talent which is you know you sometimes you know in a, in a tech startup typically you look for architects and they are available in the us or someone who has worked on the design they are waiting for the you know indian to return those are now is an opportunity for you main part is i would say the focus is on culture but i think achar did well on that i think i think that is the key for me for a startup you know getting the people to you know because earlier in a startup the founder was the center of the universe right so they will just you know walk to the floor energize motivate wish you know get the vision you know perfectly you know kind of cascade it to the people on the floor you will do it live but now that becomes very very important for the startups right so how are you going to kind of give, provide the shared vision you know energize your team uh, you know to focus on the larger goal because that's the that's what startup you know people look for in a startup right to working very closely with the founders so so i think how do you you know get the vision across to people how do you communicate how would you you know uh, uh, motivate them how do you what is the culture that you want to kind of uh, you know cast your investing on that is 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 kind of uh, critical from that standpoint i would say from a startup right the customer doesn't change you are you you need to as a startup i think just focus on your core strength you know who's your customer work backwards from them but uh, see this is an opportunity make sure you know you are able to kind of uh, you know cascade the vision mission and uh, you know engage with our employees i think that's that's the way i would put it see this is an opportunity 
talent pool is available global so i think right. that's where we can put it right mr acha that's also bringing up another perspective and incidentally there is an interesting question on that as well from the pre asked right the point the people are trying to mention is chros are likely to be the follow up ceos of the organization so the question goes like this is future ceos going to be from the chro track given that the this year it's not just about business but more about people and talent and so on and so forth so acha you can go first and then followed by any one of you want to throw a comment on it feel free well i guess uh, uh 2008 was the year of, 2008 2009 was the year of the cfo 2020 2021 is definitely the year of the chro there's no doubt about it whether a chro will become a ceo time will tell i'm sure there are number of uh, people in this community as well who have the wherewithal to be a ceo going forward but i think uh, restricting ourselves to the discussion and the pandemic i think hr has played the role of lord krishna enable motivate guide more than anything else and uh, i think in today's context uh, a reeducation of managers has become paramount for example in star health itself we have seven generations working the 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s <laughs> and one odd one odd person at 80 <laughs> i mean very very senior doctors are still empaneled with us as consultants and there's a huge huge gap in terms of the thinking that's going on whether it comes to the pandemic i mean 80 80 year old wants to come to office a 21 year old doesn't want to come to office and that's the difference so i guess um, uh, from 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 a mindset perspective uh, the definition of productivity has undergone a change from output to outcome employee experience i think radhika was talking about it it's her it's hyper personalization of employee experience in today's context everything is happening remote but the key to success going forward will be driving adoption of technology i clearly see four playgrounds emerging going forward i mean from an investment perspective i'm talking about what is the physical environment office one is the remote or virtual the third is digital which is both i want five days this week office next week home and there's a fourth one which is emerging and becoming more popular in today's context that's gig and the skill sets in terms of uh, the rules that are required and the, the skilling of hr people for these four kinds of categories of people will also be very very different i very clearly see a new set of leaders emerging who used to be very successful in the pre pandemic or bc before corona will be a different lot after corona ac that's that's very very true and i see a lot of people getting that courage in today's context so i am sure culture of courage has to be ushered in having said that i i think it's a golden age for hr and uh, uh, ceos from the hr fraternity not too far away you've got to be able to now imagine a lot of stuff rethink reinvent reignite reset so that's that's my view awesome anish patel anyone want to throw a spare <laughs> you think you can really become the ceos i'm just putting it out I just have one point that I want to add here, which is uh, taking it ahead from what uh, Dr. Acher said, which is, you know, CHROs uh, increasingly are becoming part of um, discussions in organizations on strategy, and they play a huge part in, uh, you know, even focusing organizational capabilities around what kind of leadership uh, needs to be there and what kind of leadership skills need to be built. um they also are involved in pretty much every function within organizations and you know they need to necessarily have an understanding of various uh, business functions going forward uh, you know this could be the decade of the chro uh, increasingly if you're looking at organizations becoming more employee centric um and uh, you know in addition to business capabilities you have to look at uh, aspects of uh, strategy you have to look at risk management and you have to look at employee welfare then chros kind of bring in uh, all of these capabilities i mean by definition chros need to do all of this so this could pretty much just become the you know the decade of the chro sorry anisha i think i i don't know why this question ever comes up you know does it really reflect that hr was never doing anything you know completely wrong question i think we have not really you know the hr uh, fraternity has really not marketed enough but any transformation that happens koshik i don't think you know it has to be a teamwork and hr plays a very very crucial role 
you know one of the important things of transformation is all you know it is all about talent and you know everybody needs to understand if the right talent is not in place if the right talent is not in room the organization can never really transform if the right you know people practices policies are are not there i think hr has put themselves or marketed themselves as a more administrative function that's where this question keeps coming right i don't think that's really the reality today i am aware of people who have moved in from a hr field and they've been successful sales guy they're successful ceos you know there's so many of them there are so many other people who have moved from other functions into the hr this thing for and to get that exposure a lot of companies as part of the leadership development you know mandatorily move people into hr you know for an exposure on the people agility part of it but let me tell you hr is not just about people in fact there are times you know i remember my boss um, partha telling me uh, that my hr guys are perhaps the uh, least people agile guys because they will put uh, they would be questioning we want to implement certain things they would be questioning why should it be done right so i think we need to take a balanced approach between what businesses what costs are there as well as what employee preferences are there you know at times get upset at this question wanted to wanted to martin any point of view yeah i think, I think uh, pretty much well uh, discussed and shared the points i think why not i think uh, and uh, you know looking back i think the pandemic just showed how hr played a you know leadership role pretty much in terms of uh, leading the effort through the pandemic in terms of getting getting organizations back back at their feet i think you know that's a uh, and, and if you could just put a perspective on because you talked about privacy you talked about security being a very critical element particularly in the line of business that you are handling could you also bring that perspective of stating what it means from what kind of data are being collected are you putting the data to the right use will you be able to going back to anish's statement the only reason why people keep asking this is because past we are in the enabling seat now you are in the driver seat <laughs> yeah yes so yeah de- definitely because uh, you are in the business of people right so and uh, phases and th- just looking back in the last 7 8 months the phases step one uh, for us to step step up and say hey go and connect with employees right so engaging during the lockdown right you have to tell your manage your uh, line managers to go connect with them get their policy or what needs to be done so you have to pretty much be prescribing and you know guiding the business in terms of how do you keep the people you know engaged motivated drive those deliverables through that and also kind of you know come back with what is working what is not work quickly change around it i was were planning for your return to work as well you know uh, pretty much took the leadership role you know the, your, my, my ceo and cfo were looking at me in terms of what needs to be done you know you know uh, we created the playbook in terms of phased approach of coming back and taking the you know stance whenever there was a crisis what is the right thing to do right so uh, i think those those definitely kind of tells you chr why not as chro became i think i i found the question a little thing because you know i have seen examples of people already the uh, getting into the ceo tables and you are you are in the in a decision making table in terms of the business in terms of what needs to be done what is taking in the i thought it was a you know a last decade question so <laughs> 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 for our audience i know we are nearing like you know the last 15 minutes but this is a large topic right i mean as you know uh, this is pretty much a horizontal the rock bed of every enterprise that has been successful and and some of these are very pointed nagging questions that we are asking because of our past uh, relationship if you will and i think there are many areas that we wanted to cover particularly but so what we will do panelists is in the next 10 15 minutes i will just talk about top areas any top of your mind Pointed answers, one or two specific areas. Increase. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I think I think the the word CEO is a possibility. It's just that the E would mean Chief Empathy Officer for <laughs> HR folks. All right. Passion, patience, and perseverance are three things that are going to be uh, called upon in the next uh, couple of years. And I think the HR role is now going to be more hen- enhanced towards building capacity, capability, and culture. Mm-hmm. Hey, one of the things that I, uh, I I I I take a cue from all the all the uh, things that have been said is I think we need to unleash some unconventional HR now 
take it to the people rather than people coming to us because it's quite possible in the virtual world so people's perception about hr moves from needing hr to choosing hr to loving hr to finally trusting hr i mean that that word uh, is becoming extremely important so how do we make that difference to people's lives how do we uncomplicate things i mean irda is also talking about you know simple policies to people so that they they understand and there is no fine print so how are our people policy is going to be uncomplicated that was the word we used to use in the poll of munich so it's that's why i said it's 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 time it's it's golden age as far as hr is concerned so does that mean that you would recommend any top of the mind policy changes anything that you would advise yeah i think working hours flexibility i think the uh, the, the, the travel rules where you can stay uh you how your expenses are going to be taken care of whether you can have an office at home internet expenses i mean end of the day i mean people people are talking about you know there is no travel there is no food expense but at home electricity expense has gone up with heaters uh in in the southern part of the country and uh, sorry in the northern part of the country and acs in the southern part of the country so that expense has gone up because all day your ac is on so who will go who's going to pay for that I mean, we've got to take a deep dive into many of these aspects okay even if you travel uh, i don't think we should ever allow uh, two people to stay in the same room for some time at least there's no sharing accommodation we should change that and things like that i mean uh, i mean whatever number of policies you have in the organization in today's context all are relevant but will probably need tweaks to cater to the pandemic anish so from an nhrd perspective or your hr community point of view are you guys bringing out some blueprint that can be adopted by all of us you know i think i think um, um, koshik see a blueprint really might not be the answer to any of the things but uh, you know um, i think the you know one was let's say from a compliance you know i think the government has done a great job of making a lot of things flexible especially from the dot side and all you know and allowing the work from home to continue right um, nascom is again looking at you know different things i think the legal uh, framework today exists i think it was more of a mindset uh, that we all were carrying i think that has also been uh, um, you know that taboo is actually completely completely gone today it's all about you know you know just giving an example in my previous organization we had implemented work from home for you know quite some years back but we were not looking at the bottom of the pyramid which is the engineers okay the zero to two years guys because we you know the mindset that all of us were carrying that it is important for them to come home they were not given laptops they were you know will they really work will they learn i think that is completely now that's a completely no no nobody is thinking about it like like that second thought process let me just you know practical examples when somebody is not on a project you know again the policies were of saying that you know when you are on bench please come to office because immediately something can happen and we will call you okay so people used to ask the question why you know you allow me to be at home i would rather be there these were the things where hr was perhaps branded the wrong way and uh, all these things are going away i think there needs to be more personalization today i can tell you at mar labs we did a you know and a recent survey we uh, continuously do that as to which location are you actually working from so that we know what is happening and where people are more than 50% of the folks are actually working from their hometowns they are not at their base location productivity has really not gone down in any way right but yes we have done you know there are certain essential services which needs to be at the base location give an example let's say somebody like you know somebody who's part of the corporate information the desktop support and things like that if i have a problem with my system a laptop an engineer is there who has a problem obviously i expect the person to be in office right otherwise for me it's a uh, uh, lack of productivity right so there are certain essential uh, folks who need to be in office but the rest of the thing rest of the jobs uh, people can actually be working remotely i think we need to be flexible on those norms that is really what is happening today perfect perfect but that also brings in a very crucial thing while i'm working from home at least in the office we had the ecosystem that was kind of keeping us on the morale perspective now how are you measuring martin maybe you can start and then followed up by achar stating how do you keep the employee morales how do you validate their mental state aren't we overworking they, they are right they they are because you know um 
just to give an example uh, in our organization the seller organization right so earlier you know the three teams the vendor managers the in stock managers and the finance team could just walk across and make those decisions now it's a half an hour call a scheduled call right so it, you know the informal conversation is now becoming a scheduled call as such right so uh, it is uh, it, it was taking a toll uh, for people right so uh my view is i think uh, people need to adapt and i think uh, this is going to be the uh the way forward right what we what what it requires for people is to kind of uh, discipline their calendars right because uh, currently we have been using the calendars only to schedule meetings right but how efficiently are we using the calendars now you know in fact my one on ones i've been telling them saying that put your you know the work that you need to attend to in your calendar you know your scheduling meetings your personal work as well because you are working from home your work and home is also so schedule that so you you have a i'm not saying the work is going away at least you have a control over your time and you know what what you know once you have in a sense of control that itself you know takes a lot of stress away right so coming to your question in terms of how are we measuring you know we have our uh, our engagement surveys like daily you know we ask a question every day right? so we have a tool where we do uh, get a response from them. it goes on for 30 days so every 30 days we do kind of uh, measure up and see what 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 needs to be done right uh, second but for the pandemic what we did was also we ran a specific survey to understand where they needed support or what are the challenges they are facing what are the positives and things like that and build in some of the policies like uh, you know uh, what what is it they, they really need you know the infrastructure and those kind of Uh, and other thing that we also uh, told our managers is you know make sure you are connecting with your teams uh, regularly right so initially they start within a daily stand up everyone used to every manager used to have the team meeting uh, beginning just to say you know how are you guys doing you know health wise and just to you know be empathetic to them not not about work right and at a leadership level we had an alternate day connect just to see any issues that can be surfaced and that's continuing that alternate day connects we call it as endo day you know you would call and uh, that is continuing even now uh, because in a remote workspace you know that 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 kind of at least surfaces all the issues for us on you know and quickly what whatever that we need to do and things like so these are some of the mechanisms that we have put in place uh, apart from the usual hr guys connecting you know and my leaders doing one on ones and skip now so yeah so that's the kind of mechanism that we have sure. but it requires a lot of mindset change yeah, Koshik, yeah. so Uh, you know, I think no employees should no longer complain about this, but it requires a mind sh- mind shift and more discipline in terms of you know how we can use existing tools. Right, right. Doctor Acha, very quickly, I want to say uh, we have uh, we don't monitor. <laughs> <laughs> we leave it. We leave it to the uh, department head, and that's uh, enough for us. But the productivity numbers are, are coming. So as long as the going is good, you're, you're not worried about who's doing what. But we do have a sense of who's doing what, and I've been uh, trying to talk to all the uh, leadership in in the company about work-life fulfillment, because I said we have seven, eight generations. The way of thinking is different. The way of coping with the pandemic is also different. So there is balance. There are rules. There is discipline. and at the same time i keep telling my managers saying that being connected is not equal to being engaged right so i'll leave it there perfect <laughs> <laughs> so so we have one more question uh, on the chat window and this is particularly asking about including the recent update right with google employees forming a union so i'll allow you to take a free dig at it but the question is here how freelancing platforms impact being felt versus employee unions and employee becoming more demanding like what happened with google right now so what's your thought so you, you, you know it's um, i think it's too early to gauge anything but you know i think in the last uh, 10 months we've also seen these are some of the changes really we have seen you know, stuff like that so there's a lot of shifts that we have seen so this whole employee uh, part employee employer relationship is also and especially when it comes from you know the surprising part is coming from an uh, from an employer right the employees in a in a company where there all the sorts of benefits perquisites everything is there right uh, so it's also at times this sort of pandemic also uh, 
creates fear in the mind of individuals as to what is going to happen right now one of the important things um, you know which um, especially in the western world it's um, um, you know what we are really seeing uh, um, now places like the bay area and all are very very expensive new york bay area and very expensive so today there are companies really talking about and they've made really public statements of saying that there will be a cost of living adjustment that would happen eventually right so somebody who was in the bay area now goes to you know a tier 2 tier 3 city there's a significant cost of living uh, in index so i think you know things like this when it actually percolates down right it actually creates fears fear in the mind of individuals and you know you tend to you know come together and stuff like that right that's that's one aspect one aspect of that the second thing is it could also be the previous question when we talked about the mental wellness and things like that i think uh, it could also be you know issues around that um, you know which is really coming into question out there but largely it is about the uncertainties or the lack of clarity what is going to happen in the future i think this is this is what really is triggering but at times it could be for the positives we have seen you know you, you know a union culture at times it is for the wellness of both the employer and the employee till the time it is done in the right way so hopefully it turns in that manner is what i would say well, it, it it has only 100 people currently so let's see how it grows yeah. but one of the things that i wanted to uh, one of the points that i wanted to make is uh, the emergence of povh or vh virtual harassment so prevention of virtual harassment is becoming a, a challenge a topic that all of us would need to keep in mind going forward i have already started seeing a lot of cases in that uh, in that area now uh, from the point of view of the previous question in terms of unionization i always follow a policy i say it's nice to be important but it's more important to be nice however from an hr perspective it's most important to be fair so as long as you are fair i i don't think the issues uh, like the one that has happened in google or the one that happened in bangalore in the in the apple factory uh, uh, should should need to happen i mean there were some there were there were a lot of uh, issues there and the company finally accepted that yes we have done these 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 mistakes and whether they were deliberately done or whether they were genuine mistakes only time will tell but it's it's very important to be fair at the end of the day and reasonable i just wanted to add to this one point uh, and maybe it's 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 a, a large a reflection of really the times that we live in um i mean obviously the pandemic has created a whole host of uncertainty you know in the way we live but um, there are also huge uh, political changes in large parts of the world whether it's in the us or it's in india and you know there is um, uh, there is more debate in public forums today and people are aligning one way or the other and if you just combine all of it and i think there's a lot of information overload you know a lot of us are grappling with all kinds of uh, information which comes to us real and cooked up so there's a lot of fake info out there as well and i think at the end of the day um, you know when when you uh, zero down on people who are working and trying to make a living in uncertain times it creates a lot of insecurity and uncertainty in the minds of people now you add to that things like pandemic coming in and very real job losses and all of that happening uh, you know then a fall out of that would be things like unions etc where people come together it's a very natural move to come together because you feel that there is a certain security and safety in being collective and you know collectively being able to address certain issues which you know maybe for the common good now how this pans out going forward uh if if uh, like dr achar said if if as a union you are able to work towards benefiting uh, you know people and working with organizations so that collectively everybody moves forward and um, you know it's a positive and a win win for everyone well then that's the best that's the best way forward so it's still early days but i think all of this is really a sign of the times the fact that there is a lot of insecurity that's also the reason incidentally there's been so much of uh, you know people have been working the kind of hours that they've been working um you know people working from home somewhere there is a lack of information on what is happening outside so they feel they need to work that much harder their bosses need to see them putting in extra hours i mean i know uh, people who are working till 12 1 in the night it's absolutely common and par for the course it's particularly prevalent in the it industry uh, you know where you have uh, 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 setups in the us 
uh, today it's absolutely par for the course to set up calls at 12 in the night and 11 in the night i have um, you know young friends who work in that it industry and i'm constantly surprised when they say oh i have a call today at 11:30 in the night with my us counterparts i mean and my question to them is do your us counterparts not work india times at all is it always you who seem to work you know us times but that's how it is it's become par for the course so um, uh, you know i think it's really a sign of the times and uh, uh, more important today for leaders to somewhere uh, manage the, uh, you know that insecurity with their teams expectation management is one thing but really this is insecurity management you know to tell them that it's okay i mean you can work the kind of hours that you need to work but uh, a lot of things like employee wellness all stems from you know from from these from these things so it's really part of that perfect perfect i think we have come to the top of the hour but before we leave are there any leaving comments parting notes you want to leave to the audience in whichever order you want to go your parting comments uh pandits will continue to predict the future but uh, the impact of the covid-19 pandemic will certainly reverberate into the future and uh, hr leaders as hr leaders uh, i guess we should take the actions now rather than defer it and uh, help focus the way work is going to change in the near future the concept of workplace has changed so i think let's kind of embrace it uh, there's no going back uh, in times it's more looking ahead and lot more opportunities there so i think uh, you know look forward to taking that opportunity and taking this organization forward right i'm uh, kashik i'm a born optimist and i think uh, problems are opportunities right and this has been opportunity okay. just yesterday we have seen uh, tcs announcing the result and look at the result in q3 that they have given which typically is a, a weak quarter for most uh, companies um you know every company is going through a transition and i think both personally professionally it's been a year uh, where all, all of us have learned have adapted and i'm sure it, it will be for the for the better Yeah the only thing i want to uh, you know sort of say here is i think the new normal is a better normal if you ask me it opens up a whole wealth of opportunities for organizations to do so many new things it uh, you know you can tap into a whole world of uh, um, you know talent which is available out there which uh, was earlier not available you can make you can reach out to people in a in a very real meaningful way you can best get the best out of your resources um so if you, uh, you know it just requires thought and it requires um, effort to move in that direction but i really do believe the new normal is the better normal it's got us all thinking very differently and i think thinking for the better awesome awesome thank you thank you all so much thank you attendees thank you for taking time on a saturday morning and you know listening to us all these are outstanding experts i have had one on one conversation with many of them and a long standing working relationship with some of them so please take advantage of this i think from my point of view a closing remark would be that in the new normal it's about how collaborated are we how networked are we and how do we support each other are taking advantage of all the digital platforms with us and uh, thank you all thank you for taking time have thank a you. wonderful day thank you thank you, thank you.